Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about Upon Weblock and Death of Children, uh, written by Edward Taylor. Now, before I go into summary analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, um, before I go into the summary of this poem, I do, I do want to give you guys um, some background on Edward Taylor and the world that he um, lived in. <clears throat> First and foremost, you have to understand that he lived in the 13 colonies, uh, specifically he lived in Massachusetts, uh, and, and pretty much Massachusetts as a colony uh, was not what it is today. Uh, the, the colonists, the Puritans, um, um, Taylor uh, is a Puritan, and um, their lives were very tough, their lives were very brutal. Um, America was pretty much a massive, expansive wilderness. Uh, um, there were a lot of Indians um, in America at the time, and, and, and the American Indians were not so kind uh, to settlers. Uh, I mean, there are certain tribes that helped um, settlers survive, and there are certain tribes that were trying to kill uh, the settlers. And, uh, and there's a lot of wars and battles over land and property, um, and it was very bloody and, and, and brutal. So imagine you're living in a world where um, you know, people you know are dying, there are battles breaking out here and there, um, and, and you live in a wilderness. You know, life is not easy. Uh, most people are working back, breaking work, grueling work, um, farming, manufacturing, um, things like that. There were no cozy, um, you know, office jobs. You know, you're sitting at your desk, you're, you're doing your job. There was nothing like that. Uh, I mean, there are a few jobs like that. But not on a massive scale. Most people were probably working outdoors. Um, you know, a lot of people were building towns left and right. Boston was being built. Um, famous cities were being built. And, you know, it wasn't an easy life. It was very tough. And also keep in mind that most of the people uh, um, who left England, who left parts of Europe to come to the colonies, uh, they were poor people. Some of them were being persecuted religiously. Uh, so they, they left the old world and came to the New World um, for religious freedom, uh, and, and most of them were poor. Um, a lot of them were in like their 20s and 30s, because to make that journey from England to to, uh, um, to the Americas, um, or you know, to America, uh, it was not easy at the time, um, and a lot of people just died on the journey. So most people who made the journey, uh, I'm not saying all of them were 20 years old, but a lot of them were in their 20s and 30s, um, because you need, you needed the health and the stomach uh, to, to pretty much sail from England uh, um, to America, which, you know, takes several months. Um, so Edward Taylor, uh, he lived in that type of world. Um, people uh, didn't have the greatest access to medical care. Uh, uh, a lot of children died at a very young age, very early age. Um, and, you know, people had a lot of children, not because they, they, they necessarily um, wanted like, you know, 10, 15 children, but it's because a lot of the kids would die before reaching adult, adulthood. Um, so, you know, it was a very tough life. Um, and it was a life, I think, that was, um, that uh, converted a lot of people or, or kept people very religious because... It, it was the only hope that you had in that type of world. Uh, um, keep in mind that, you know, in the Bible it says that it's easier for a, a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, that's a very, very significant stipulation that exists in the Bible. It doesn't say that a rich man can or a rich person can't enter the kingdom, enter the kingdom of heaven, but it does say that's very difficult. It's, how difficult is it? Well, a camel, it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle. Now, just think about that for a second and how impossible for you to shove a camel through an eye of a needle. Um, so if it's easier for a camel, imagine uh, how hard it is for a rich person. Uh, it's not impossible, it's just extremely difficult and hard. Be the, and the reason why that is, uh, is because the rich man uh, will depend on his mighty dollar. Uh, the poor man, or the man who has less money, will look up to God. Um, and so, um, I'll give you another example. Um, if 
a rich man uh, needs a surgery, he can buy it, he can afford it. If a poor man needs a surgery and he can't afford it and he can't buy it, he dies. Um, so the rich man needs hope. The rich man um, needs to look to a greater power because, you know, he's very limited in what he can do with his own hands. He's very limited of what he can do um, with his own shoulders. The rich man, on the other hand, whenever he has a problem, he can throw his money at it because he's worked for it and he depends upon it. Um, so uh, Christianity and religion is not, you know, specifically for poor people. Um, it's just that more people... More, a lot of people who are less fortunate oftentimes look towards it um, and, and really believe in it, right? Really believe and, and submit and adhere to it because it's their great hope. Um, a rich person can be religious, can go to church, but the thing is like when times get rough, it's more likely that they'll turn to what they can do rather than to obeying, um, you know, a god. Um, and, and Edward Taylor, you can see in, in this poem that that's exactly what he does. I mean, Edward Taylor is not wasn't the richest man ever. Um, I mean, his poems, although we're reading them today and they're published, he prob he never, not probably, he never earned a penny earned a penny from his poems because he didn't even want them to be uh, published. All of his works were private, um, especially when we look at Edward Taylor's preparatory meditations. Uh, they're all private and only, only for, for his eyes to see. Um, maybe he shared a few of them with his congregation here and there, but for the most part, it was for his own personal um, um, attention. Um, so that's the world he lived in. That's the background of Edward Taylor. Now let's, let's talk about uh, the poem here. So the poem, um, Upon Wedlock uh, and Death of Children, uh, what he's talking about here is pretty much what the title is telling us. Uh, he starts off by talking about marriage, talking about how sweet marriage is and how he is in love with his wife and how his wife is in love with him and how, you know, wonderful and delightful and, and sweet it is. Um, and then he talks about um, his children. Now, he, he you know, it's, poems are very, he doesn't outright say this, this is a poem. In the poem, you know, he talks about flowers and, and knots and uh, you know, we get a little line that references um, Alexander the Great, uh, and we get little words here and there um, that that really focus on beauty, the beauty of flowers, the beauty, um, you know, natural beauty, and, and that has a lot to do with the Bible, too. I mean, all of Edward Taylor's works, if you've read the Bible, um, you'll see Edward Taylor's works in a new light, in a different light, because if you're reading it from the perspective of a religious person, a person who's read the Bible, you'll see all of the religious connections and the Christian connections that exist in um, um, his works, especially when he's talking about flowers and, and roses within uh, uh, um, yeah, this poem. Um, you think about, um, there's um, it's not in my mind right now, the, the exact verse is not in my mind right now, but there's a, there's a verse in the Bible where, where, where um, it says, you know, look at the flowers of the field. You know, they don't, you know, God takes care. I'm paraphrasing. God take care, takes care of the flowers of the field. Look how beautiful and how wonderful and magnificent they look. You know, the flowers get water. They get what they need. They get sunshine. God takes care of all of them in their glory. And, and when I think about that verse in the Bible, when I think about how he's, and Edward Taylor is talking about flowers uh, in this poem, um, you can see how he sees his wife, how he sees his kids as these wonderful, beautiful, magnificent, blissful things that he's he's been given, um, that he's been um, blessed uh, of. Um, now, he goes on to say that, you know, nothing can separate the bond between him and his wife, how they love each other, how special they are to each other. Um, and then it... it like, I mean, you really have to pay attention uh, to the words and, and how he uses them uh, because then he actually goes into how um, his children, some of his children die, some of his daughters die. Uh, and, 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 and he doesn't go into a boohoo moment. Uh, he just turns to God and say, all to the glory of God. Uh, I know my daughters have died. Um, I know that, you know, they've been taken away from me. Like his sons, he has sons that survive. But, you know, at a very early age, he sees um, a few of his daughters die. Uh, and, and basically, you know, when a couple of your daughters die, it, it's supposed to be, you know, immense grief. And um, 
you know, maybe cursing to the heavens and cursing God, but no, Edward Taylor kind of, you know, he's like, all to the glory of God, and, and he thanks God, he's like, you know, God, I know my daughters are in heaven with you, I know that they're rejoicing in heaven, and that they're in your presence, um, and, and he kind of takes this stance of, how can I scream, how can I yell, how can I, you know, be angry at God when he's the one that gave me these gifts, and he's the one that take them away, and he says, like, you know, I know that they're not lost forever, I know that they're in heaven um, um, with God and, and, and basking in his glory. So he's like, you know, you gave them, you gave them to me for your glory. And now you've taken them away for your glory. And he's like, you can take them, God. Like, I mean, of course, you, you, you know, as a father, you know, how sad this is, you know, how, you know, tearful this is to, to him, but he does, the poem doesn't uh, spend too much time on being sad, on being, uh, 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 on crying and wailing and, 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 you know, kind of like begging for it to never have happened and all that kind of jazz. Edward Taylor is more taking the stance of God is great. Um, he gave me a wonderful marriage. He gave me wonderful children there. You know, my daughters have died, uh, and I'm still going to rejoice in the glory of God and, and praise him no matter what happens, because I know, uh, my daughters are going to a good place or a better place. And, and really, that's that's what you get from the poem. Uh, I mean, when it talks about the knot between him and his wife, you can look. You can also look at it through the perspective of maybe he's talking about the bond between him and God and how that can never be uh, um, separated. But but I think it's more realistic to think that it, it's it's talking about him and his wife and the bond between them two and 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 uh, how that love and that connection. Um, you know, made kids and, and how these kids are wonderful, but some of them have died, but I'm not going to dwell on the death and on losing them because I know that they're not lost forever. I know they're in heaven with God and rejoicing and, and God's glory is going to shine through them. Um, and, and that's really the poem. Now let's talk about the deeper meaning and the analysis here. Um, it is Edward Taylor's poems. It, I think it really shows you a man who's completely, who has completely submitted to to God, and who's completely pious and devout. Um, you know, no matter what happens in his his life, he's always going to find joy. Um, you know, in the Bible it says that true true joy comes from God. And Edward Taylor, I think, I mean, even if he got hit by a car, I mean, car. <laughs> Wow, that's messed up. Um, cars weren't around back then, but Edward Taylor had the perspective of, I mean, if he got hit by a car, a train, a nuclear jet, I mean, that doesn't even, I don't think that exists, but he would still get up and still praise God. I mean, this is a man who's entirely drunk and, and enamored and um, intoxicated for his love of God, for his... You know, he's entirely devoted and pious. Um, nothing, nothing, you know, not even losing his children could derail him from looking up. Uh, it's a level of faith, a level of trust that, you know, that borders on the obsessed. And I mean, that's all. If you really um, devote yourself to Christianity, that's all, you know, in the Bible. That's all in the Bible. And, you know, his faith, I mean, it's it goes on challenge. I mean, when I look at Edward Taylor and I look at Jonathan Edwards, they would put Christians today to shame. Uh, they would put them to shame because these are men who walked miles upon miles upon miles to just preach. Uh, and, and some people today, you know, a 30-minute drive is too much to go to preach somewhere you don't know. Um, these men... You know, they worked hard all their lives. And again, I think during times of hardship, during times of grief, that's when humans are most likely to believe in God. Um, you know, you'll probably find more people in third world countries and developing countries who are extremely devout and religious um, than people who live in wealthy first world countries. Because in uh, third world countries surviving is honestly it's a miracle you know 
and, and for the poor man, surviving is, is honestly a miracle because the poor man around the world, the poor man doesn't have health care. The poor man doesn't have access to, to, to great hospitals. Uh, the poor man, you know, he doesn't know if two years, five years down the line that he'll have a meal on his table. Uh, the poor man, you know, every day for him is is a miracle that he survives and makes and makes it to the next day. Uh, the poor man doesn't have job security, but but the rich man has all these things. And when you think about um, today in, in first world countries, you know, if you join a job today, there's certain there's a, a lot of jobs, a lot of companies in America and in other countries in Europe um, and in other rich countries around the world where you can start a job today and you know, it's reasonable to think that you can spend 30, 40, 50 years working there. And, you know, jobs in first world countries come with benefits, health care, retirement plans, um, health insurance, dental, all types of things for your security and, and for your your benefit. Um, you know, to, to Edward Taylor's world, none of that existed. I mean, America didn't even exist. Uh, so at any point in time, your kids could die at any point in time. You could die at any point in time. You could just get a disease and you're you're done. Um, I mean, it wasn't uncommon to see during the colonial times. It wasn't uncommon to see a twenty year old die or a thirty year old die or a child die. Um, you know, you could die at any age of anything of disease of 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 starvation of lack of work of of any like I mean. You are so vulnerable. Life, really, like like in the Bible, it, it says that life is short. I mean, to the Puritans, life was really short. I mean, when we live in the 21st century today and people are living to, to be 100, I mean, yes, pro probably a lot of people um, or a good number of people in, in, in the 17th century lived to be 100. I mean, you know, not everybody was dying at like, you know, in their 50s or 60s or something like that. Uh, but, you know, some people made it to really old age, but more people or more people than, than, you know, you would expect died young. Um, and so they had to put their hopes, um, in something greater than them. Uh, they had to put their hopes, uh, in God and, and, and they, they really were devout and pious. I mean, today we usually, you know, we pretty much, um, um, you know, look down on Puritans and, and tell them that they were taking things too seriously. And I agree, there are certain things that they really took too seriously. Like, I mean, the witch trials were just too much. Uh, that was just, that was just, I, I mean, I don't know what mindset they went into. Um, and there's a lot of other unreasonable and questionable and, and very, um, uh, you know, horrific things that they did, but when it comes to religion, when it comes to the piety and to the devotion and to the, um, the, the, the level of seriousness that they took when worshiping God, um, and especially when we see from this poem from Edward Taylor, uh, you know, we know the world that they were coming from, uh, uh, how tough it was, um, and, and, and really uh, why they had to look up uh, and, and really hope in something greater uh, because life was 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 brutal and if you didn't have hope in something greater than yourself like like God um, I mean a lot of them would have just went insane and just bounce off the walls because I mean a man just this man <laughs> Edward Tiller just lost two um, you know a few kids you know a couple of kids and I mean, what do you do? You know, what do you do? Um, probably if they were born in the 21st century, the kids would have been taken to the hospital and they would have been fine. But in pre-America, in the colonies, I mean, what could doctors really do at that time? Um, it, it was very limited. Uh, I mean, they weren't, you know, they weren't um, performing some sort of high-tech Grey's Anatomy surgery, um, you know, they, they had to work with what they had and, and people died really young. Um, and so ministers like, like Taylor, they had to keep looking up and they had to be devout and serious about it. And you could also imagine this is the same kind of um, approach 
approach that that you know he spread to his congregation and to other people uh, because that's what that that's this is what they could put their trust in at that time. Um, now today, a lot of people see that they're Christian and that they're they're devout, but I guarantee you, I guarantee you that that Christians today, um, pretty much most, if not all, Christians today could not compare uh, to the world of the of the Puritans uh, and what they had to face and and uh, the religion that they had to um, to you know the the life that they had to endure and. Um, you know, they, they needed something to believe in, something to hope in, some, some, you know, they needed God to kind of like carry them and be there for them. Unlike how the modern man, you know, the modern man will say he believes in God, but he, he won't be that devout because again, more and more people in America, um, are, are, you know, are at a place in the, in their lives where maybe they're not rich, but you know they can afford health care they can afford a trip to the hospital they can afford the basic necessities of life um, I mean most people have a home a job you know basic health care and they can afford to buy themselves food um, I mean for most people around the world if you can you know get the basic necessities such as you know health care and doctor visits and having a stable job uh, you might look towards your dollar to help you out in sticky situations rather than looking up. And that's just the reality of it. Um, yeah. So that's all I had to say about this work. Uh, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video.